We're going to take a look at excitation contraction coupling in this video. Excitation contraction coupling is how an action potential in a muscle cell causes it to contract. So this is really important to know. And if you just look at the words, it tells you what's happening, right? So excitation is referring to the action potential that's happening in the muscle cell and how it causes it to contract. So that's excitation contraction coupling. And then just a reminder that one muscle cell or one muscle fiber is only going to be innervated by one somatic motor neuron. And then remember the definition of a motor unit. Remember a motor unit is one somatic motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers it innervates. So this picture down here is showing one motor unit. So you see one somatic motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers that it's innervating. So we're gonna take a look at what happens at the neuromuscular junction. In this picture of the neuromuscular junction, we have the skeletal muscle cell down here on the bottom, and you can see the motor end plate, which remember it's kind of all wrinkled, and that increases the surface area so that there can be more nicotinic cholinergic receptors put there. And then we've got the somatic lower motor neuron that is gonna synapse here with this skeletal muscle cell. And remember that we don't call this an axon terminal, but we're going to call it a terminal bouton. And as the action potential comes down and reaches the terminal bouton, that'll trigger the opening of the voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium will come in, and that'll trigger the release of the neurotransmitter by exocytosis. And remember that the neurotransmitter that's released to talk to the skeletal muscle cell is always going to be acetylcholine. And acetylcholine will diffuse across the synaptic cleft, and it's always going to bind to these nicotinic cholinergic receptors that are located on this motor end plate that's part of the plasma membrane of this skeletal muscle cell. And when we have the acetylcholine bind to the nicotinic cholinergic receptors. They're ligand gated ion channels and that'll open the gate and mostly sodium ions will come in and that's going to create a graded potential called an end plate potential. And with sodium ions coming in, that end plate potential is going to be depolarizing and we're going to reach threshold and trigger the opening of these voltage-gated sodium and voltage-gated potassium channels, which are right on the sides of the motor end plate. And these voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels will then be found on the rest of the sarcolemma or the positive membrane of the muscle fiber. So we're gonna create some action potentials that will travel along the sarcolemma or the plasma membrane of the skeletal muscle cell. And then as the action potentials travel across the sarcolemma, they're going to reach these T-tubules. And remember the T-tubules are part of the sarcolemma that have dove down deep inside the muscle cell and they create these little tubules. And the action potentials will travel down there because there's voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels throughout the T-tubules as well. So that'll take these action potentials deep down inside the muscle cell. And as the action potentials travel down through the T-tubules, they're gonna travel right next to the sarcoplasmic reticulum on either side. And that's going to trigger the opening of some calcium channels in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And calcium will then be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm or the cytoplasm of the skeletal muscle cell. 
All right, so just a little story. Um, this just helps me remember what's going to be happening with the calcium ions and the actin or the thin filaments. All right, so up on top we've got our thin filament or actin and we've got the tropomyosin rope that is covering up the binding sites for the myosin heads or the myosin cross bridges. And then we also have this protein called troponin. And when the calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum out into the sarcoplasm, calcium will bind to the troponin that's on the thin filament. And troponin is like a little cowboy, okay? And he is just riding on the little actin pearl, like a little cowboy. And he's holding on to the tropomyosin rope and the calcium is like the big prize, okay? So when he grabs on to the calcium prize, troponin is going to stand up and lift the tropomyosin rope out of the way and yell, Yahoo, I got the calcium prize, okay? And when troponin stands up, and lifts the tropomyosin rope out of the way because he got the calcium prize, notice that that's gonna lift the tropomyosin out of the way and off of those binding sites for the myosin heads. And now the myosin heads, which remember, they are like that little slingshot, you've already pulled the myosin heads back and they're just sitting there waiting ready to reach up as soon as those binding sites are exposed and they'll just reach up and grab the thin filament, do their power stroke and they'll rotate and then they're just gonna slide those thin filaments towards the midline of the sarcomere and that'll shorten the sarcomere and cause the muscle to contract and shorten, okay? So that's just the little story that I use to help me remember. Just remembering troponin is like the little cowboy riding the actin pearl, and he's holding on to the tropomyosin rope, and the calcium is the big prize. And if he grabs the calcium, he's going to stand up and lift the tropomyosin rope out of the way, and that's going to expose the binding sites for the myosin heads to now reach up and grab onto the thin filaments and then start that cross bridge cycle, okay, where they will grab on, do their power stroke, ATP will bind, we can pull the myosin head back again and then grab on again, do another power stroke, slide the thin filaments further towards the midline, contract and shorten the sarcomere even more, generate more force, and so we just keep repeating that as long as the tropomyosin rope is out of the way and the binding sites for the myosin heads are exposed. All right, so let's just put everything together in one picture for excitation contraction coupling. So remember, this is how the action potential in the muscle is going to cause it to contract. So we're going to have our neuromuscular junction here. That's just where the somatic lower motor neuron is going to synapse with our skeletal muscle fiber and we've got our motor end plate here and action potential will come down the somatic motor neuron reach the terminal bouton not the axon terminal that'll trigger the opening of these voltage gated calcium channels and they will open Calcium will come in to this terminal bouton and that'll trigger the exocytosis and release of acetylcholine. And then acetylcholine will just diffuse across the synaptic cleft and then it's going to bind to these nicotinic cholinergic receptors that are on the skeletal muscle cell.
And these nicotinic receptors are just ligand gated ion channels. And so that'll trigger the opening of the gate. Mostly sodium is going to come in to the muscle cell. And with sodium coming in, that's going to depolarize the muscle cell. And so we're going to create a graded potential in this muscle cell that's called an end plate potential. So we're just changing the name of the graded potential. And we're now going to call it an end plate potential. And I'm sorry we keep changing the name of the graded potential. So this graded potential in the skeletal muscle cell, we're just going to call it an end plate potential. So these sodium ions will flow both directions here. And when we reach these voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels, we're going to reach threshold. And that'll trigger their opening. And then we'll have, like, for example, sodium rushing in. And that's going to create our action potential here. Okay, So we're going to be creating these action potentials in our sarcolemma or plasma membrane of our skeletal muscle cell. And they're just going to travel along the sarcolemma. And then when they get to these T tubules, we have voltage gated sodium and potassium channels there. So we're going to create action potentials down the T tubules as well. And as our action potentials travel down the T tubules, they're going to travel next to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And as the action potential goes by, it's going to trigger the opening of some calcium channels in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And that will allow calcium out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and out into the sarcoplasm or the cytoplasm of the skeletal muscle cell. And so this calcium will then bind to troponin, which is one of the proteins that's on the thin filament or the actin. And remember, troponin is your little cowboy riding the actin pearl. And he's going to stand up because he's got the big calcium prize. And when he stands up, He's holding on to that tropomycin rope, and he's going to pull that tropomycin rope out of the way. And when he does, that'll expose the binding sites for the myosin heads. And remember, the myosin heads are like a slingshot. So you've already pulled those back, and they're just ready to go. And they will just reach up and grab onto the thin filament. And then they'll do their power stroke and they will slide the thin filament towards the middle of the sarcomere, and that will shorten the sarcomere and cause the muscle to contract. Okay, so that is excitation contraction coupling. So that's how the action potential in the muscle causes it to contract. And this is just the picture from your book that we drew out. Um, shows a little bit better the Crossbridge cycle here um, with the myosin heads doing their little power stroke here, sliding the thin filament towards the middle of the sarcomere um, and doing that little cycle with the Crossbridge cycle. And then there's also a really nice little tutorial here that um, you can watch at home. It's just a couple minutes long, but it's really good as well if you want to take a look at that. But that explains excitation contraction coupling and goes through all the steps too. All right, the other important thing is once you've contracted your muscle, you usually want to be able to relax it as well. Okay, um, so what is going to get rid of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft? How do we get rid of that? So hopefully you remembered that we have that enzyme acetylcholinesterase that will chew up the acetylcholine and get rid of it. 
Okay, and then the other thing we need to get rid of is the calcium. And so we're just going to pump that back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So let's take a look at some pictures. So here we've got on the left, we have action potential coming down our somatic motor neuron, releasing acetylcholine, binding to the nicotinic cholinergic receptors. We have the sodium coming in, creating our graded potential or end plate potential. And then that would reach threshold. We would trigger the opening of the voltage gated sodium and potassium channels in the sarcolemma, create the action potential. Those would go down the T-tubules trigger the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release the calcium ions. Calcium would bind to the troponin on the actin or the thin filaments. That will lift the tropomyosin rope out of the way, expose the binding sites for the myosin heads. Myosin heads would grab onto the thin filaments, start the cross bridge cycle, and that would slide the thin filaments towards the middle of the sarcomere here and shorten the sarcomere and cause the muscle to contract. And then over here on the right shows the muscle relaxing. So in order to get the muscle to relax, we need to get rid of the acetylcholine because if that stays around, we keep stimulating those nicotinic cholinergic receptors and then producing action potentials. So we're gonna use acetylcholinesterase to get rid of the acetylcholine and then we're also going to take the calcium ions and pump those back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum so if the calcium is no longer around okay if that gets snatched out of troponin's hand our troponin cowboy gets really disappointed his big prize is gone and so he'll just sit back down on his actin pearl and drops the tropomyosin rope back where it was before, and it covers up the binding sites on the thin filament. And now the binding sites are no longer exposed and the myosin heads can't grab onto the thin filaments anymore. So they can't hold on to it. And so the thin filaments will then slide back to their original positions where the muscle was relaxed again. So the sarcomere will lengthen back to its original position where the muscle was relaxed. So that's how we relax the muscle. We get rid of the acetylcholine with acetylcholinesterase, and then we remove the calcium by pumping it back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum.